I am Isander. And I'm Coda. Thank you for tuning into this episode on our fixations. Our fixations. Today, hyper fixations? I think it's still fixations for now. Oh. Um, <laughs> it should be hyper. Um, we're continuing <laughs> this Warhammer 1 with the runner-up for the poll. Uh, fun fact, it was actually really close to being a tie. Yeah, I was watching the comments and like it was every other one was like, I already know who the winner is. It was like the, the guardsman and this one. It was no, 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 no. It was Era Indominus and this tied really closely. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was chaos. They finally have their day. Which they finally yes. have their day. Yes. But before that, if you haven't already, please, please, please go check out the Patreon where you can help us keep producing this wonderful podcast and chasing the dream. By joining, you get priority on all fan submitted content an extra episode every week, all kinds of other perks, and we've absolutely shattered our first Patreon goal mm -hmm. of 100. And those lucky 100 have been locked in to get the limited first sounding patch. Mm -hmm. uh, we're locking in the design of the manufacturer and are very excited to show it when it's done. Mm -hmm. These things just take time, lead time, shipping, all that. Also, because we shattered it, there's now a Discord up that has been popping it's been fun it's been it's been very fun it's been awesome to see the patrons in there mm -hmm. it's, it's been a good time right oh yeah um, i've been in there i've been in there most of the time because i spend a lot of time editing i'm at my computer <laughs> discord's right there on my other screen might as well chat with the guys in there it's, it's, it's been awesome. real fun it's the awesome. guys in there are great yeah um but um unfortunately that's caused a problem um some of you just barely missed the cutoff. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, just barely. We're at, like, 160 now, and some of you are left feeling cold down the rain. But don't worry. In this house, we shatter goals. That's just what we do. So our eyes are set for 250 right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we hit that, there'll be another limited slot release for those 250, and it's only going to those 250. So if you, some of you will honestly be starting a collection in no yeah. time if we keep going at this rate. So if you want one or any of the other awesome perks on Patreon, like the bonus episode every week, behind the scenes, Discord, or the community streams we do, please click the link in the show notes or head over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. For those of you already there, thank you. You are amazing and you are what keep us doing this. Lastly, you all have been amazing about sharing, commenting, and liking the episodes, so we appreciate all your efforts as we fight the machine gods, right? We're inching closer to our goal of 10K, so we're actually over halfway there. Yeah, so we are over halfway there. Keep, I said, we shatter goals in this household. That's what we do as a group. We are... The <laughs> We're the best. We have, we have the best fans. Honestly. I was there to watch it tick up <laughs> to the exact halfway point of 5,000. Exactly. That was fun. We have the best Legion out there, so please keep that up for you amazing audio listeners. Keep subscribing with the auto download and leave us a review. Obviously, five stars are preferred. But however you feel, say it with your chest. Honestly, with the way we move, we're going to be done in no time with this. So thank you for everything you guys do. You guys are why we do this. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get into it with chaos. Chaos. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's going to get chaotic in here. Oh, oh hell yes. Yeah. But before I dive into them, I want to I want you to keep this in mind. A 40k is a universe where you better be damn careful when you pray. Mhm. Mm because somebody is listening. Mhm. Mm and they may just go out of their way to answer your prayer. Yeah. <laughs> they may just be like, hmm, hey, how are you doing? All right? There's a lot of villainy run amok in, in 40K, right? It's, yeah. It's kind of its thing, mm -hmm. right? If anybody ever tells you that there are any good guys in 40K, it, it's cap. Yeah. It's, it's, they're they're, wrong, they're right? usually not. And usually if they are talking about somebody who's friendly, they may or may not have some skeletons in the closet. Like the salamanders using napalm. Yeah. Right? Um, Nobody is out and out good. Even like I just mentioned, the nicest space marines mm -hmm. use napalm. Yeah. Like, it's not great. Yeah. But that's the fun of it. Um, who doesn't like being the villain from time to time? Yeah. I mean, this, is just a, this is just a universe where whoever you pick, you get to be the villain. I've, I've always loved the villains in stories. They are, they're honestly always been more interesting to me, so that's why I've been pulled to 40k, right? I can't remember, but there's like a special reason for that. There's like a YouTube video I saw like a couple years ago that's just like, here are the psychological reasons why. Maybe. However, if you had to choose any one faction mm -hmm. to pin as like the de facto bad guys, it's chaos. Yeah. It's chaos. With the only thing coming close is like the Tyranids, but even then the argument could be made that they're bugs and it's a hive mind and they're just doing what they're made they're to do. They're just doing what they're made to do. Right. But but um, but even then, there's still complexity. Even though you, if you had to throw a dart at a board blindfolded and say that's a bad guy, you're getting chaos. Mm -hmm. There's some complexity with chaos, right? Mm -hmm. um, to understand them, you have to understand the warp, which is um, 
a second universe stapled under our universe. It's like a parallel dimension. Right, yep, it's right beneath it. It's made up of pure energy, and anything that happens in layer one can affect layer two, and vice versa. It's like the upside down. Not everything in the warp is chaos, but everything chaos usually starts from the warp. Mm -hmm. This is especially true of the big four running the show, Korn, Nurgle, Zinch, and Slanesh. Starting with the most straightforward, uh, his followers chant blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne. The closest thing in this setting to a god of war, Corn. Corn. Mr. Corn. Mr. Cornelius Fudge pays his bills with rage and fury. Everything from an angry bar fight uh, to a full blown war feeds him. Right? Yeah. Because it's 40K. If you didn't know, the tagline is In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, yeah. there is only war. He's doing great. Yeah. He's doing great right mm -hmm. now. He could go the rest of his eternal existence without lifting a finger and he'd still be getting boatloads of worship because the ball's already rolling yeah, it's already done it's, it's already done already i done. don't need to right it's 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 actually funny enough probably why in all of his art mm -hmm. he's usually just sat there yeah he's all, chilling he's all, done his work he don't need to do anything else all the other chaos gods are just out there doing their thing zinch is plotting nurgle's cooking up something disgusting yeah and sanesh is doing the unspeakable um but like he's just sat there yeah. He's just posted up because he knows. He, he released his one-hit wonder, and he's making bags off it. He Doesn't need to do anything else. the Carly Rae Jepsen of this universe. <laughs> Except it's not Call Me Maybe. It's Call Me All Day, Every Day, because it's 40K. Um, <laughs> because of that, he doesn't need to be active at all. Um, he doesn't even need to be involved in a fight to be the winner. As long as two thing, two forces are clashing mm -hmm. and they're kind of evenly matched and it's a fair fight, mm -hmm. Korn's the real winner. He must love the orcs then. Yeah, he he doesn't even need to be anywhere near a fight and he's getting worshipped, mm -hmm. right? It's why he was usually seen as one of the strongest forces in 40k um, with the most recent Arcs of Omen book. Making him like the strongest chaos god. Yeah. Us. Well, it seems like in the modern era, there is a lot of war happening. Ooh, something to mention. Remember the way I mentioned the two universes are stapled with the warp and um, our universe, the physical one, mm -hmm. like underneath each other? Yeah. In current 40k, it's less that. There's a rip in half the universe and yeah. the warp is leaking out. Yeah, so, if you look at the maps, it's just like in the middle of the galaxy. There's just the like The universe is literally split asunder, right? Yeah. It's uh, a good time for chaos, not for anyone else. Mm -hmm. But but in the newest series, slight spoilers for Ox of Omen, slight, something major happens for Korn. Yes. That puts him at the very tippy top. And mm -hmm. that is, the man puts his arms on each side of the chair, mm -hmm. stands up, goes over to his fridge and reaches in for the coldest can of whoop-ass. <laughs> And he opens it up on the Imperium. Yeah. It. It's a lot. How much whoop ass? Uh, I'm, I'm reducing it a lot. I'm obviously joking, but like the entire Imperium's aware of what he's done. Yeah. And he's, I'm I'm assuming they're not happy. Oh, oh, it's he he took one of the biggest wins since the universe split in half for chaos. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's honestly just because of how simple he is. Yeah. Like he doesn't want you to play with your food or mm -hmm. psych out your opponent. He doesn't want you to outflank them, outthink them, or find any way to manage the enemy long term. Yeah. He wants you to get in there mm -hmm. with a sword and axe mm -hmm. and beat them to a pulp. Just mano y mano. Just hit them. Just no no spells, no mind control. You just get in there with these. Just hit them. These. Just, just hit them. <laughs> <laughs> just hit them uh, yeah just just hit them which makes sense as to why he's kind of like a reflection of our rage mm -hmm. right like anybody who's seen a bar fight happen there's not much planning happening there. no it's no. anger and fists yeah maybe so, a little drunk too so, yeah sometimes a lot of drunk mm -hmm. so he represents our rage but like i said in 40k you want to be desperately careful what you pray for yeah right in corn's case his virtues are simplicity mm -hmm. honesty discipline and consistency mm-hmm Corn is the only god, hell, the only thing this side of Dorne mm -hmm. that will never lie to you. Yeah. If he tells you something will happen, it will happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's right? just it's just honesty through and through. As you know, as I was writing this, uh, also the thought creeped up. If Dorne wasn't so loyal, he'd mm -hmm. be a great corn guy he'd just be telling the truth he, he and him and corn would vibe yeah because they're, they're they're just like do it it doesn't matter just mm -hmm. do it hold do up it. your end every time 
right? Um, he do you wants think they're sponsored by Nike, the both of them? Just do it. Just corn. do it. <laughs> just do it, corn. Uh, he also... He also wants you to be the best killing machine that you can be. It's probably why, if you look at all of his Marines, they have washboard abs. Yeah. Angron has muscles on his wings. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he's got, like... Angron's got muscles on his muscles. Yeah, no, he's... Right? So, if Korn existed in our world, he would make a killing mm-hmm. as a motivational speaker. He would run Gary Vaynerchuk out of business. <laughs> Like, like you know, you know, you know Gary V, right? Mister mm-hmm. Bur- barges into your home. What? You still have anything nice? Sell it all. Grind. <laughs> corn would corn would barge in and go. What? You have anything? Grind to dust. <laughs> Grind to dust. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if if he came to our world, he would make a killing. He'd probably write a motivational book. Something like, the only way we make a mountain of skulls is one at a time. On a, by corn. He would. He'd be the first chaos god Nike sponsored. On 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 the list of things that I need a commission or an artist uh, uh, commissions to do. Uh, corn in in like you know the 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 classic just like millennial suit vest. Just doing a TED talk. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, he he he's he's really good about that. He wants you to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. He wants you to be regimented. He wants you to get after it. Right. It just so happens that it is pounding your enemy in the sand, but get after it. It's kind of aspirational. Um, a lot of people like to portray him as a dumb brute, but just because he's taking the straightforward approach doesn't mean he's stupid. Yeah. Because, I mean, just look at machinery. The less moving parts, the more consistent it's going to be. That's the same thing with planning. The less, like, layers upon layers upon espionage upon all that, the, mm-hmm. the less likely it is to work just because something's going to fail in there. Just Corn's plans are simple. Just charge. No, they're as simple as they need to be for the situation. He will use tactics. Mm -hmm. If he needs to flank because you truly cannot win head on, Mm -hmm. he will obviously flank. He's the god of war. He's good at this. It's it's what pays his bills. Yeah. It's what puts the milk in the cornflakes. Okay? (laughs) Cornflakes. So so a lot of people like to portray him like that, and that's just not the case. He will also... Use magic occasionally, mm-hmm. even though he hates it, but he does it in the cool way. Mm. So instead of like a fireball, he like covers his sword in fire and fire, right? Yeah. Instead of lightning, he'll like drop kick you, and then lightning will shoot out of his fist like feet. <laughs> He's a lightning bender. Uh, he'd be cool with that. He'd be because it's, it's mano y mano. It's mm-hmm. not like oh, I'm ten thousand miles away. It's like I hate you, and then lightning happens to come out. Yeah. Bonus. Which, to be honest, a lot of fire bending really is about that, right? But all his traits are really best. Reflected in his chosen champion, Angron. Angron is his chosen son and champion. Like I mentioned, he's got muscles on muscles, and his sword is literally made of a demon that he beat into the right shape. Well, that explains why it looks so god oh. cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, for a long while, their relationship was portrayed as like a convenience thing, mm. where um, I'm Mr. War God, you're Mr. Always Angry. To get this bread, mm-hmm. but in the newest books, they actually expand upon this after Corn takes that huge win. I told you about, yeah, <laughs> huge win. The huge dub is yeah. he gets out of his chair and touches grass. Right. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He, uh, he actually winds up giving Angron peace for a few moments, really. No rage, just no peace. pain, peace. That's sweet. It, it, like, he went out of his way to show, well. Corn, Angron got to see the universe as Corn did for a little bit, mm. and like had like no murder, nothing, just breathing, just just quiet. For mm-hmm. a it was really touching to see him finally get peace, mm-hmm. even if it was only for eight weeks, eight days, and eight hours. Mm. If you don't know, because of the way the warp is right now, halfway into our universe, Angron cannot die. Corn's mm. doing great, like I said, and he's gifting his champion. He will always be back in eight weeks, eight days, and eight hours. Yeah. Or is it eight days, eight hours, eight minutes? One of the two. He will always show up in eights. Maybe it's both. As an aside, every Chaos God has like a favorite number. So yeah. like like most of Corn's units like to organize in eights or like divisible by fours mm-hmm. kind of deal. Um, all of them have a special number. Yeah. Hence 888. Corn is eight. Yeah. Um, when he's not having father-son time with Angron at the expense of a good chunk of the known universe, mm-hmm. <laughs> Korn tends to use bloodthirsters to get the job done. Yeah. These are just greater demons, just 
think of Mega Satan. Yeah. Just just think of Mega Satan. Somebody showed me a picture of a bloodthirster recently and they just said, it's a big Satan. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that can't be right. And then I Googled it and my first thoughts were, it's a big Satan. Yeah, their, their aesthetic is huge. They have massive wings, claws, horns, and they just rip through armies all by themselves. Yeah. Um, Are they in packs of eight as well? No, they're usually one because they're shockingly strong. <laughs> No, they're you know, shockingly strong. I'm surprised that Korn's favorite number isn't seven. Why? Because seven, eight, nine. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think that's pretty violent. Stop. Uh, <laughs> you're dumb. Actually, uh, that's Nurgle's favorite number. Yeah. So seven did eat. Seven did eat. He ate a lot. Yeah. Um, but no, bloodthirsters usually move solo. Yeah. Um, because at their strongest, they're able to go toe-to-toe with Primarchs. At their mm, strong. Really? At, at their strong. Like Prime. Prime, 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 Prime. prime. Mm. Your average one won't. Arc? They're very strong, but they're very, they're, like, they're not that guy, right? Um, unfortunately, just mm. because of how strong they are, they tend to be used by the books to showcase how strong something else is. Yeah. Because it's like, a, oh, look at this. It beat a bloodthirster. But at the end of the day, that's still violence happening. And so it's still corn beating corn. still won. Thus making the rest of the bloodthirsters, I assume, stronger. Yep. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Kind a of. Little, yeah. At least a little bit. It really makes him feel inevitable, but somehow there's somebody... More inevitable than Mr. Milk for the cornflakes. Yes. And that's Nurgle. Nurgle. So that was corn. If you like rage, rage, murder, rage, mm-hmm. he's a guy for you. Yeah. Uh, lots of red, lots of just huge, huge units. And um, big, big guns and big swords. Uh, well, actually, more Mostly swords. Mostly swords, oh, he yeah. Has, he has this cool unit that's like a pack of dogs running on fire through the sky. It's so cool. It's so cool. What in Greek mythology? It's so cool. What in Greek and mythology? He's got my card in the Betrayer, which is like a regular Chaos Marine, but like with one buff arm. Mm-hmm. Think Quagmire mixed with a world eater. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, we've already mentioned this, Angron's model is so good. It's so good. Angron's model is so good. It's so good. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. So Looks like it's an absolute, pardon my French, bitch to paint. Yeah, that's fine. But, God, yeah. But it looks so good. So if, if that's your aesthetic, if that's your thing, if you like just simplicity, discipline, and all that, this is your guy. Before we get to them, we have to do our weekly foreign fracas. Foreign fracas. Or, or international inter- incident. Working title. Um, But what matters is... <laughs> that should be... <laughs> that sounds like a BoJack Horseman bit. <laughs> We should keep that entire thing as the title. Foreign Freca or International Incident. It's a working title. Yeah. That's the full title right there. <laughs> oh, God. Please, please don't agree with him in the comments. Anyway, <laughs> what matters most is, as you guys know, I accidentally started a conflict when I passively mentioned the Aussies running the game. Of and now bit. we have World War Three in the comments. It's, our... it's been a trend for you lot to let me know where you're from, which is cool. I don't mind it at all because I'm big into travel. I've been blessed to see a good chunk of the world. So I love hearing about where you're from and the cool things there, right? And I want to highlight them. We actually started getting Saudi Arabian commenters, and it's cool because I've actually been there. It's really pretty, way too hot. Yeah. I went there in the summer. It was... You I, went in the summer? I, and keep in mind, this was from a relatively cool climate I went there. Mm-hmm. It was, oh my good. That's the only thing I could complain about. It was gorgeous other than that. Oh, and, you went there in the middle of summer? And I won't lie, the clothing there breathes. Yeah. It breathes well, it so well. It has to. It has to. Well, I was a kid at the time. I didn't expect it. I see the temperatures there. Well, I was a dumb kid at the time. I Ugh. didn't expect it. <laughs> but um, this week we have two winners technically. Too. Mm-hmm. Australia and the U.S. in general, right? Yeah. Usually, a state comes out on top, and that's what I like. Mm-hmm. And last time, it was Alaska. But this time, it was such a consistent spread across all the states. I just had to give it, it to the, the U.S. states in general. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, USA, USA, USA. And Australia. And, um... A U.S. A U.S. A U.S. <laughs> Well, the U.S. won the numbers, I have to give the Aussies props because they've been in the Discord chatting it up. Oh, yeah. They have been amazing, mm-hmm. right? So the amount of learned on the convos we've had, push them to the top. Yeah. Easily. If you want to join the Discord, all you have to do is be a patron, get a ton of other benefits like I mentioned, the free swag we like to give out, the limited run, and um, you get to join in. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you there. But let's start with the fun facts. We'll start with the U.S. because they carried the stats, mm-hmm. and I know we have a re- ridiculous military but the scale of it hadn't sunk in yet fully for me it's huge the largest air force on the planet is the u.s air force yeah like that's the largest collective aerial army it big it big <laughs> the second largest is the u.s navy it big 
<laughs> which winded me, but it gets more mind bending. Russia has the world's largest, it's the world's largest nuclear power. Mm -hmm. They have the most nukes, yeah. right? Um, trust but verify, who to thunk. Um, but we're second mm -hmm. with 5,428. Yeah. Can you guess who's third? Who's third? It's actually the UK. Um, the UK. With 225. Yeah. So no, 225. Mm -hmm. 5,428. That's the gap. But it gets crazier. If somehow a US nuclear submarine were to defect from the US, mm -hmm. declare its independence, mm -hmm. it'd be the third biggest nuclear power. It'd knock the UK off the list. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Some nuclear submarines? Have a single. Wingle. One of them. It was hard to find the... The, the, the specific numbers, but all I know is one of them. One every, of them. Every single number I saw was much higher than what the UK had total, by the way. But yeah, one nuclear sub defecting immediately is the third biggest <laughs> nuclear power. It's like that time when Pepsi had the biggest navy for like, for five, like five minutes. minutes. Yeah. No, it's, I, I saw it was mind blowing. It was That's mind That's insane. Right? That's insane. <laughs> Speaking of though, one of my favorite fun facts about like the um, the British Navy and their their nuclear power, mm. they've just got like three subs. They don't even know where, running around the oceans, just hidden with a note in a safe written by the well, no longer the Queen, the late Queen. May she rest in peace. Um, just written by whoever is in charge at the moment to say, "Do this in case we get nuked," and nobody knows what it says. It could say. Uh, uh, just revenge, or it could say, B build a new U UK. I don't know. Nobody knows. I, I wouldn't what it be says. surprised if more nations didn't have the Damocles protocol of we've lost, mm -hmm. make them lose. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm I'm positive every nation has a we lost button. Mm -hmm. Make sure they didn't win. Yeah. Right. Um. Moving on to Australia. This one actually made my day when I learned it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's wheezing. The U <laughs> Australia exports sand and camels to the Middle East. Yeah. They're the Middle East sand dealer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's 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 in their top 100 exports. Sand. Earning them over $200 million a year. All I'm saying is for you Aussie fans out there, get a jar and grind. <laughs> <laughs> There's $200 million of sand you're standing on. Get at it. Okay, so... It <laughs> It sounds silly why it would be sand, but I've already figured out how. Yeah. It's glass. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I saw that. But well, because you can only make glass out of like specially homogenized sand. Mm -hmm. And we're actually running out of it, I guess. I didn't yeah. realize. Glass shortage. But like, I guess Australia just has a lot of sand glass. Good for you guys. Thank you, Australia. I love glass. And you're going to love them even more because um, while... Alexander Fleming, a Scotsman, mm -hmm. um, discovered penicillin. Um, it was Howard W. Florey who worked out the production of the stuff. Mm. So both of them together are what helped us get to where we are today. So, big props. Thank you, Australia. I know. I'm loving this trend. I'm glad you guys love this section too. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to represent your patch of soil, uh, leave it in the comments. Keep that energy and maybe your nation will come out on top next time. Jar of dirt. Also, if you have any fun facts about where you're from, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. I've already seen a couple. Um, I think my favorite one was the best zoo in the United States. I did. I looked into that. Mm -hmm. What a zoo. What a zoo. I won't spoil the state in case they win, but what a zoo. Now you have to tell me. Mm -mm. You have to tell Stand me. Stand up here. You're not allowed to find that comment either. <laughs> now, moving on to a bit of chaos in real life. Mm -hmm. Have you heard the new song by Drake and The Weeknd? I have not. I didn't know there was a new song Well, by we're Drake going to listen to it, and we're going to cut back in, because I want your thoughts on this, because you're far more musically inclined than I am. I, spoiler, love it. Yeah. It's Drake Prime again, and it's The Weeknd too. I've been begging for this. I've been, I understand why The Weeknd won't work with Drake, but I've been begging for this. <laughs> So I, 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 I literally heard this. And my reaction was, Jesus. So we're gonna we're gonna listen to that, and then we're gonna cut back to your thoughts. Now that you've heard the new song by The Weeknd and Drake, what do you think about it? I don't like it. Let's keep it brief, like 
30 seconds. What are your thoughts? Um, it's a dry motor. It's a dry piano motor rhythm. Pretty boring. I like most of Metro's other other work. This just <laughs> seems like Drake suddenly asked him for a beat and he was in between making beats. So he pulled something out of his recycling bin to throw at Drake. It's a shame that the weekend's on this because I love Abel. But like this is mid. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's hurtful because this is prime Drake to me. This is this is Drake this is Drake at his best, but whatever. What do you think about the vocals? Ignoring the dry rhythm, just just what do you think about the vocals from both of them? Uh Abel's vocals are good. Okay. As usual. Okay. He's just a great singer. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Drake is doing that thing he does. Okay, but 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 regardless of that, it just sounds like what you'd expect from them, right? Yeah. Pretty much pretty much exactly what you'd expect from them. Well, not out of Metro. Mm-hmm. I, again, I like a lot of Metro's other work. Mm-hmm. It, it, you, you, this is just fair enough. It just seems like he's just like, ah, shit, I gotta pull something together. Let me. Okay, there we go. We're done. Okay. Now, what if I were to tell you that entire thing mm-hmm. was an AI? That was an AI? All of it. Oh. We've been duped! Duped! Bamboozled! We've been smackled off! That's not even a word and I agree with you! Well, that would explain why it was so mid. Drake didn't record those. That doesn't matter. That doesn't that was It was ghostwritten by somebody, right? Yeah. And the beat was done by somebody. Mm-hmm. But the voices? All machinery. Yeah. All machinery. Oh. Well, they got... They the g- vocals that sounded just like what you expected from them. Well, a- Abel, Abel, Abel... God. Abel's got a good voice, so I guess it's really, it's, you know, the AI has a lot to uh, uh, get trained on. Um, it really got Drake's uh, inane squawking down properly. Okay, hold on. I like Drake. I like some Drake every now and then, okay? But that's neither here nor there. The reason I wanted to bring that up isn't for its musical talent or anything. Mm-hmm. It's because this is another historical moment when it comes to AI. Mm-hmm. Because that was machinery. Yeah. And because of that machinery, Drake, who released a song, I think a week ago, right? Mm-hmm. Woke up to another Drake release that was charting higher than his before his label stopped it. That's hilarious. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Just shut your eyes with me and just picture you're Drake in a private jet somewhere. Life is good, right? You have more money than you can fathom and you know what to do with. You wake up. You just released a new album sampling Kim K. Talking about her divorce with Kanye. It's toxic. Mm -hmm. It's toxic. You're feeling yourself. You pull it up to expect, you know, top three. As usual. And you see, Drake, top three. Okay, let's listen to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't record this. (laughs) What? And and it's you prime. Mm. It's it's I'm not gonna say it's better, because it's it's not, but it's still close enough that it fooled most people. Like most people up until like Universal started pulling it, Mm -hmm. were like Oh, God damn, Drake's back on it. Like, every single comment is, Jesus, what a banger. Mm. Every single, like, if you, if you look at them, because they, they're up every now and then they disappear. Mm-hmm. Every single comment is somebody going, Jesus, mm. this is a banger. Mm. Jesus. Right? Every, 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 the amount of times I've seen, you know the one meme with somebody pulling out their earbud and it's smoking? Mm-hmm. Just heat? Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not all that. It is hilarious to think that uh, modern Drake is so mid that a robot does him better than he does. We're not going to discuss Drake or not. I like it. Whatever, right? But but this this is the most impressive thing to me. Well, the thing that I don't like how people are covering this, it's like, mm. yes, now with this technology, we can have our artists at their prime forever. I can have 16 Drake whenever I want, Mm-mm. right? And, and the thing about it is it's not going to democratize music. No. Because... Labels have been planning for this. Mm-hmm. N- no, Nobody's talking about this right now. But labels have been planning for this because they have some insane lawyers. Yeah. Chappelle covered this um, in one of his stories when Prince came back as the artist. Yeah. You know why Prince couldn't come back as Prince? He had to come back as the artist. Hmm. Because that's how they're referred to in their contract. Mm. The contract that states the artist mm-hmm. surrenders all rights to their likeness, Mm -hmm. back catalog, and most importantly, their voice, Mm. to be used by whatever music group in perpetuity across the universe. Yeah. They have lawyers that have seen the future, basically. Yeah. So with that in mind, knowing that there are people who've died and are already subject to contracts like this, people are saying, oh, this is great. This means anyone, it's a come up. Anyone can have a sample of the Drake. No, you won't. No. They have the legal rights 
to Drizzy's voice. Mm -hmm. This isn't democratizing music. This is going to hurt it, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, sure, it's going to cause some interesting things, like being able to bring back artists to finish projects that they never fully finished, mm -hmm. you know? Or like, getting... Because there's, like, for example, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. tons of unfinished stuff, where his vocals weren't quite there, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And AI could shore that up, and you could have new Michael releases. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's that's. I would put that in a different category. But what I fear we're going to see is people using AI. We, we've, we're seeing holograms used already mm -hmm. against people's wishes just to make money. Yeah. Like, I, I believe it was, was it, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Prince, not Whitney Houston. I think it's Prince. Um, specifically, in his will. Mm-hmm. Did not like the hologram stuff. Was it Prince? I, I think it actually might have been both of them. Either way, they said, they, don't use my f When voice. I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm done. Yeah. And then there are attractions all over the place. Yeah. So this kind of stuff isn't... You have to understand, the people in power have already been planning for this. This mm -hmm. isn't going to democratize music. No. This is just going to consolidate power for it's them. It's just going to consolidate power and then if you try to throw like if you try to throw a prompt at an AI say make me some music, it's just going to come up with a mid beat. Well, first of all, the best AI is going to be developed by them and trademarked by them. Mm -hmm. And then the realistic thing that's going to happen is hey AI, give me give me some of Drake's voice. I'm sorry, I can't do that. That is property of Universal Music Group. Yeah, pretty much. That's what's going to happen. It's, it's going to be like democratizing a, anything. It's going to be like a book or video game DRM, but for people's voices. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But also, at the, at the same time, I've been seeing a lot of people cooking up sh stuff in their basement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this may be one of those bits of technology where it's impossible to do that. Mm. I, don't, I don't know enough. I need to learn more. A lot of you guys have been awesome in the comments teaching me. So if you are already mentioning how there's fully AI already... Um, Influencers being mm -hmm. tested already. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very successful. No, for sure. I've seen a couple of them. And um, the Best Buy E-Girl discussion was hilarious to read. The Best Buy E-Girl discussion. <laughs> the amount of comments I saw, Best Buy has an E-Girl? I know where I'm going. <laughs> and I'm like, no, brothers. <laughs> that's St the plot. Stand strong. That's the plot. <laughs> that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. You're not so. <laughs> yeah. Hold firm. You're not supposed to fall to that. No. Yeah, yeah but yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Oh god, that, that that one cracked me up. But yeah, no, that's that's. I wanted to bring that up because it was very interesting. It mm -hmm. feels like a watershed moment in AI, and this is something cooked up in someone's basement, um, which is cool. But if you think for a second that that will be able to compete with Warner Music, no, Sony Music, no, Universal Music, no, 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 they will throw their full weight behind something mm -hmm. like this and you won't survive it yeah you will you will be you will be if you if the unfortunate reality is if you try to like use the ai to create like oh the next michael jackson hit i don't know who owns michael jackson's uh artists some some may likeness. not some may not like like um for example i know some some stay in the estates mm -hmm. i think elvis's estate is pretty tightly controlled which is why we don't get too many schlocky movies about him mm -hmm. i could be wrong because there are there are a couple schlocky movies. Oh, this is a weird him. dude. He liked schlocky movies. He mm -hmm. was in life in a couple of deliberately schlocky movies. Yeah, he was he was schlocky. So his estate would totally approve mm -hmm. some of that stuff because yeah. it's like it's Elvis. He'd, he'd do a Hawaii movie, mm -hmm. right? I, it's either Elvis or Marilyn Monroe. One of them has like their estate has a grip on their image. Yeah. So, but, um, but, but 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 not everyone did that. But anyway, mm -hmm. the the lawyers of these estates won't care if you're just like Tiki. I'm just a little guy. They will make you. They will make you an example. <laughs> oh, like that one dude who leaked Pentagon documents <sighs> on Discord. On Discord. <sighs> With his name and credit card attached. Mm, I didn't know there was name and credit card attached. Jesus. I just knew he leaked stuff through Discord. The details of that, it's the stupidest crime ever committed. Mm -hmm. He went into, oh, there's a really cool military term for this. Mm. I don't know. it. It's a zone where these, the zone. Are, not, these are not allowed. The auto zone. Any, any... Anything that can take images, not sponsored. And anything that can take images mm -hmm. or record audio is not allowed in there. I believe it's a felony just having it there. Mm -hmm. They don't play games. It's just, and you it's are a, not, just a black site. Yeah, and because of that, obviously nothing leaves, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy, since he can't screenshot anything and email it and mm -hmm. can't take a picture, yeah, printed the copies and then took them home and took a picture with his phone. <sighs> and then the next day at work, Googled. Leaks, consequences, question mark. Oh. And I'm like, I don't think you understand 
just how hard the U.S. justice system is going to hit you. You are going to be made an example. Mm-hmm. Your trial probably won't be fair. It's going to be swift. And it's going to be like, look what he did. Mm-hmm. Look what he did and think twice before you download anything. Yeah. You <clears throat> wouldn't download a car. Well, because it's like every generation needs an example. And interestingly mm-hmm. enough, like there's there's a new generation coming into the military mm-hmm. who aren't like aren't taught data safety, funnily enough, because mm-hmm. we... A, a lot of people in that generation grew up with with tech that was kind of gated. Like, you don't need to troubleshoot an iPad. Mm-hmm. It'll just work most of the time, right? So they don't really understand yeah. the consequences of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So this is the first, like, Zoomer leak. Yeah. And so they're going to treat it as like, hey, 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 yeah. loose lips, sink your life. The ship's going to be fine. And the worst thing is he leaked it to win an argument. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like oh, but the U.S. is doing X and Y in Ukraine. It's like no, it's not. No, it's not. And then he was like no, 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 but it is. What do you know? And he's like oh, what do I know? What do I know? Commits a felony. Commits. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just so. I'm like if if it was me and I was doing that kind of job. That's the kind of job where if I was doing it, I'd come home. What'd you do today? Work. How was it? Fun. Work. What'd you do? Work. Work. What do you do for work? work. Military. What do you do in the military? Work. work. That's that, if you're gonna do. That's what you do. It's part of the job. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you're high enough position to get into like those. Oh, he's an sites, Air National Guardsman. He wasn't even high. Oh, he just. You so, could go out and become one today. He just got his way in somehow. Okay. Yeah, just lock, I, I don't know because I I considered that career path for a little bit espionage, mm-hmm. um, and it's one of those things where you're just mentally preparing. You're like, cool. Nobody knows what I do. Yeah. And you know that's kind of the fun of it. Mm-hmm. You get you get that little. James Bond feeling about it. Ugh. Just, what'd you do at work today? Work. No, you can have fun with it. Save the world. You're sworn to secrecy. Oh. You, don't, you don't have to be true. You don't have to be true at all. What'd you do at work today? Skydiving, caught a martini. Dove in my scuba car. Have fun with oh, it. Somebody like, thinks he's out of the Kingsman now, doesn't that, he? That, that's, you, 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 if I had that kind of espionage job, which is probably out the window now, my face is on a camera. <laughs> So that's that's unfortunate unless maybe they'll maybe they'll fund your facial reconstruction surgery yes if the cia is hiring mm-hmm. um but yeah, if i had that kind of job oh i'd be oh i'd be i'd be i'd be lying I, yeah. I, it'd be it'd be so much cap oh what'd you do today went golfing with who james actually no bond bond james james bond. oh yeah it's just the life you have to live so i can't fathom the levels of stupidity it takes to do that kind of stuff now let's move on to the most relaxed chaos god and the second strongest Papa Nurgle. Papa Nurgle. Yeah. He's so gross. Um, Don't spoil it. He's so gross. Uh, the best way to describe him is Think Santa mm-hmm. and that one bat from a few years ago. <laughs> that one bat. He's that the god bat. of pestilence, plagues, and rot. Mm. He's the definition of the uh, icky gross. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky Grail. Yeah. Um, but he's also rules over stagnation and death. So he kind of hates change and ambition. Yeah. He doesn't vibe with Zinch too much. He wants you to stay as you are, unchanging, slowly getting sick and wasting away as time goes by. Yay. With no hope of change and no ambition to make it so. Yay. He is often depicted as a large figure with greenish dying skin that's pockmarked with all the worst things imaginable. Demons literally spilling from the folds and open wounds, licking up the fluids leaking out. He is gross. Uh, <laughs> I literally, He's my gross. gag reflex started kicking in as soon as you said that. He is gross. No, from the word folds, my brain was like, Ugh. yeah, he's gross. Mm. I, I, uh, I've, I think I've mentioned this like once or twice, but mm-hmm. I love how good Nurgle's models look, but I also hate them because they look so good, I love a good that name. they disgust me when I look at them. They do their job. They do their job. And I can respect that. I just will never build a Plague Marine or a Nurgle set because I won't be able to play it. <laughs> Which, I, that that's fair enough, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a question a lot of people ask, you know, and a lot of you may be asking, Isander, that sounds subjectively disgusting, why would anyone worship that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fair enough, <laughs> until you realize his virtue is love. Aww. 
That's why the Santa comes in. He's just a big, happy guy. 40K is a cold and unfeeling universe where your life expectancy can be 15 hours or less. <laughs> Death is around every corner. You will lose more people than any human heart has space to love. When you die, nobody will bat an eye. You're born with nothing. You'll die with nothing. And in that deep, unending pit of despair lies Nurgle. Something that genuinely cares about you. He'll give you a family. He'll embrace you fully. He knows you've been hurt before. He knows you felt loss. But he knows you deserve more. And that you're great and worthy as you are. What a, what a guy. So who cares if he's a supernatural trash bag and asks you not to shower? <laughs> At least he cares. At least he cares. <laughs> he do be caring. And even if you don't worship him, don't worry. Someday you'll be lying there, knowing that this is how it ends, but being terrified of what comes next. Mm -hmm. You'll lay there just desperately, clinging to life, hoping and praying with all your might that this isn't it. Mm -hmm. The whole time, unwittingly worshiping the Grim Reaper. It's why he's so damn strong. Sometimes he's even referred to as the Lord of All. Because everything and everyone will end. And that is what Nurgle is. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter who you are. Everything will wear away and die. Even the Emperor is working on it. Very, very slowly. Yeah. And it's much to the chagrin of a thousand psychers a day. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Uh, he's also, he's not a very grim reaper. Mm -hmm. Um, he's probably the happiest chaos job. I mean, he's, I've seen his art. He's got a smile on his face. He loves all the his, time. He loves his job. He's usually bouncing around a bit while cooking up some horrendous plagues mm -hmm. and is genuinely happy to see you. There's no ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. He doesn't fear death and neither do his followers, right? He's just a happy guy. Right. And ironically enough, because they have no fear of death, they really can enjoy life for mm -hmm. all it has. They know it's going to end at some point, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Something new will come after it, as it should. They'll pay back the time that's borrowed mm -hmm. so that something else can come forward. As a side note, uh, even though they accept death, they still end up living for ages just because Nuggle's a god of death, so mm -hmm. he can just draw it out. He's just like, you figured it out. Here, have some more extra lives. <laughs> uh, there you go, right? Uh, he And he also genuinely delights in his followers' victories, right? Yeah. Like, Korn does too. Like I said recently, he stood up for Angron, which... Whew, Woo. But Corin is more like the the the, the hyped streamer going, "Let's go!" Mm -hmm. And Nurgle's more just like, "Good job, that's, champ." That's exactly right. You know that one spot in every house with like Timmy's baseball trophies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nurgle has that. It's except for that, it's like Mortarian's plagues. I have to, <laughs> I have to imagine he's either got a fridge or he even just magnetizes it to his big gumbo pot. Just magnets, just yeah, no, he's got like with everybody's there. achievements. Yeah. And instead of giving trophies, he gives horrific and agonizing plagues. It's what he considers a gift, right? Um, Sweet gift. It, it takes him, presents. That's what he's working on all the time. It's the most painful and disgusting diseases you can think of. Imagine Ebola leprosy. Mm -hmm. Imagine Ebola leprosy. And you'd be a tenth of the way there. Oh. Oh. That's a lot. But again, he's kind in his own way. Yeah. He, you're not in suffering when you're with Nurgle. Mm -hmm. He numbs all the pain. You don't feel a thing when you're with Nurgle, actually. You can't feel pain. It's why plague marines are so tanky. Because they just... They don't feel it. They don't feel they don't it. Feel it. It's actually, ironically enough, why, like, if you have anything that can cut off their connection from the warp... They will fight you the hardest. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not connected to Nurgle, mm -hmm. they feel it all. Yeah, and they're like... Uh, they can mm -hmm. feel things wriggling under their skin and muscle turned goo. They hate it, they hate it, they hate it. Yeah. It, it... Ooh. ooh just look up, look up a plague marine and then imagine what that would feel like. I don't want and to. And they feel it. Yeah, if, they if, feel that. If you continue to tell me to try to feel that, mm -hmm. I think I might just vomit on camera right now. Then you'd understand why plague marines would fight tooth and nail to get back to the family. Yeah. Right. Um, if Nurgle had a better t if Nurgle had a better PR team and canon, he'd probably be way more popular. Mm -hmm. um, but <sighs> people no kind of look at the plague marines and they're like, nobody want uh. any. Nobody wants what Nurgle's selling because it's like imagine you hear on your door and mm -hmm. it's like a rotting zombie. 
telling yeah. you about, hey, my, my God did this to me. Join the fun. Join the fun. And like an arm sloughs off. And you're like, God, no. Get away from me. Get away from me. And then they're like, are you sure? I've got this wonderful pot of gumbo. We, my we have, dad made it for me. They have the equivalent of Labrador Retrievers. They have these massive, massive blobs of like flesh and plague. Mm-hmm. But in their mind, it's just a dog looking to play with you. Oh, but like it's so s- sweet. But it's like a ten-ton monster. So it's like S- what a what a cute little guy. Dude, he's not very good. yeah. What a what a joyful little 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 sweet little baby. <laughs> oh, it's wagging its tail. I think that's exactly right. Um, of all the gods of chaos, his biggest beef is with none other than Zinch. Yeah, he's kind of fine with corn because corn leaves bodies behind. It's fine. And it's just like, oh, more family members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, he's, Slanesh likes to drag it up, but eventually it's, it's going to die. So mm-hmm. yeah. that's fine. Um, but uh, he really doesn't like Zinch. Yeah. He's a patron god of um, actually. Um, actually? Let's change this. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, he's, yeah, actually. Uh, let's, let's, let's shake shish up. He, he's all about hope and change. No matter the cost, he's all about hope. I'm sorry. He's all about hope and change, no matter the cost. And mm-hmm. Nurgle hates that. Yeah. Nurgle, I like you as you are. Don't change. Yeah. Right? Oh, um, baby, you're so good. You're so good. Never change. Exactly. Um, currently, in 40K, Nurgle spends most of his time cooking up a hell of a storm yeah. at that pot. Mm-hmm. Um, a man, and apparently, he managed to get his bloated butt off the ground and uh, kidnap one of the Eldar's gods. Specifically, the one who covers life and healing. Mm. And proceeds to use them as a test dummy for all his agonizing plagues because they're the only thing in the universe that can resist that. Yeah. They'll just take it, see their side effects, and then move on. That's the worst medical trial I think I've ever heard of. Yeah. Interestingly enough, my favorite kind of not canon thing mm-hmm. um, is even though she's captive and being used to test these plagues, she may actually be secretly whispering the cures to them out as well. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if you think about it, he's the god of fungi, bacteria, and viruses. Mm-hmm. But those same three things are the sources of our strongest cures. Yeah. Penicillin comes from mold. It's mold. Vaccines come from those who are already infected. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I love that theory so much because it gives Nurgle even more duality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nurgle's great. Uh, if I had to describe Nurgle in a quick way, it'd be, you know those, okay, anyone outside the U.S. is not going to get this because this is mostly not legal. But in the U.S., <laughs> not legal. in the U.S., you're allowed to advertise medicine. Wild to me. Um... But in those ads for medicine, it's usually like, oh, hey, I'm going to cure your achy elbow. Side effects include Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, wait, 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 what? wait, what, what, what? And it's like, oh, ha ha. Thanks to this product, my knuckles don't crack as loud as they used to. Side effects include simultaneous orgasms. Aneurysms. Aneurysms is the word I was looking for. Aneurysms. Fuck. Yeah, so it's, it's usually like a, a drug that fixes... Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm being dramatic. Sometimes it's major things. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's very minor things. Yeah. And the side effects will be like heart explosion. Heart and explosion. Like, wow, disease. God's green earth would I take this? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in the US, we have those ads. and Brain um, unaliving disease. And Nurgle would be one of those ads, but it's like a five second, I love you. And then like 300 years of side effects. <laughs> 300 continuous years of side effects. But I love you. But I love you, though. <laughs> I love you, though. If you like that plague, undying, slow march forward, like the inevitability of death, mm-hmm. Nurgle's for you. Yeah. Um, he's Nurgy. got He's got a lot of green going on. Um, I'm not going to lie. If you have a weak stomach, he's not for you. His models are pretty grody. Yeah. Take, a, it, t- t- take it from me. I've literally looked at my screen and had to look away and then like hit, try to find the, the X out button from my from, from my side vision. I'm thinking about it right now. I can't think clearly. <laughs> it's so gross. I hate it. I hate and it. That's, that's Nurgle's place in the universe. Like you, most people get the heebie-jeebies looking at spiders because they're like, "Hey, too many eyes." Mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, spiders don't do it for me. Nurgle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I curl up like a small child. And some people have that reaction to him, but mm-hmm. some people love it, and that's cool. Um, Mortarian, whether I don't care if you love it or not, he's got a great model. Oh, he does have a great model. <laughs> Mortarin got it good. Um, but yeah, that's been our episode on Chaos. Um, there's four gods. This was half of them, obviously. Um, that's because there's a lot to each one. Yeah. And I didn't want that feeling like I've had in a couple of other videos. I'm just cramming stuff together to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to breathe and give them the space they all deserve. So this one's going to be a two-parter like the Primarchs. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, and I hope to see you next Saturday. These 
wonderful names you've been seeing scroll by if you're on YouTube are our awesome patrons. If mm-hmm. you want to join them, click the link in the description or again, go to patreon.com slash Sander and Coda. You get all those benefits I mentioned before and you help us keep making this and chasing the dream. Mm-hmm. Really, I can't say this enough. Thank you all. This is why we do this. Yeah. And we're only going to get better. Yeah. It, that that's that's the long and short of it this is we're here for a long time mm-hmm. and you are going to be shocked about the heights we're going to hit together especially with the support from patreon we're already planning like ways to improve the set in certain ways it's it's going to be good it's oh, going to be good oh yeah we're 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 we're, we're going to be giving mr beast a run for his money <laughs> i want that feastable money <laughs> i want that feastable money nurgle's feastables <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week for Chaos Part 2.